I cried myself to sleep almost every night on Scarface. The thing that will undermine an actor quicker than anything is fear. I've spent my life poisoning myself, and you need to know about it. Michelle <laughs> Pfeiffer just told us she runs Puffy. I don't think I believe that, Michael. Listen, if seven-year-old Michael Bosler could see me now sitting with Catwoman, <laughs> let me tell you, <laughs> uh, it's one of those life moments. Yeah, Michael was pretty excited. Uh, I would love to give a little context of the audience to where you grew up and what your life was like before you became an actress. Oh, wow. Uh, before I became an actress, I was working at Vaughn's supermarket. I started as a box girl when I was in high school and worked my way up to a uh, checker. And uh, it was a great job. Loved it. Great people in Orange County. That's where I grew up. Oh, cool. And um, uh, in fact, when I... <laughs> I I, this all came about, I ended up here in a fit of frustration. Uh, one day I was standing behind the cash register and there was some customer who was, I don't know, having such an issue with the cantaloupes and the cost or the something. And I just, I just, I, I just couldn't take it anymore. And I just said to myself, what do you want to do? Not, okay, what what can you do or what's possible? But if somebody could hand it to you on a silver platter, what would it be? And it was acting. And I had taken an acting class in high school to avoid, not because I thought I was going to be an actress, but to, but it, I could get English credits. And I really didn't like English. So um, so I ended up, I had I, I I and I didn't know anything about the theater at all, and um, I ended up falling in love with acting. I fell in love with the people, you know. I think I was a surfer chick, you know, um, and hung around all those cool surfer people, and and I think I I I sort of thought the theater people were kind of weird. And um, what I discovered is, I guess I'm as weird as they are because I really feel like. I belong here. And I had a sense of fitting in, I think, in a much different way than I ever had before. And that was when I caught the acting bug. When you catch the acting bug, how do you even go about prepping for acting? Because there's a lot of work that goes behind. It's not like you've just got a movie role, I'm assuming. Yeah, I, I imagine it's changed, obviously, since as well. Hasn't really changed. Well, Actually, a little bit. In the beginning, I was just sort of by the seat of my pants, although I um, I did start taking, I was living in Orange County taking acting classes up in Los Angeles. I was commuting and going on interviews and doing commercial interviews and, um, uh, and taking acting class in the evening. And um, um, I, so I really started out just, uh, instinctual really. And, um, and I think I always felt a sense of, um, that imposter syndrome because I didn't go to jewelry, Juilliard and I didn't go, you know, I didn't have that sort of, um, uh, traditional kind of training. Um, and, and then I studied years later, I studied with Sandra Seacat and she, um, she was somebody teaching in New York. Um, and, it, it changed a little bit the way I, I approach and I prepare, but really I just look at the script as it's like a treasure hunt for me. And it's always different because each part demands something different of you for, you know, you know, Oh, I have to learn to play the cello in this one, or I have to sing in this one. Um, or, Ooh, I have to understand what it means to have that killer instinct. Um, and then you just look for, um, I just sort of look for any kind of tentacle or any kind of thread in my life that I can then build upon because you always want to, of course, make it as personal as you can. And sometimes, obviously, the further away a, a, a character is from, from your own personality or your own experience, you have a much bigger job to do. What's, what's an example of like a thread, if you can think of one? 
A thread? Yeah, a thread of, in your life where you're like, okay, I'm going to use that for this particular role. And sometimes I don't even realize how close it is to my real life. I think, oh, I don't have anything to do with this character until I actually get in there and I, I, I discover actually I have quite a bit in common. Um, gosh, that's, that's a tough one. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Let me think. Um, is it like an emotion or is it something that actually happened that you have to draw from or is it an experience? It's typically an experience. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, a relationship you've had, an experience you've had. Um, I, I, the most challenging for me was when I did White Oleander and, um, I don't think I ever found a thread. I just, for whatever reason, I, I had a really, ch- and maybe it was because she had no thread. I mean, maybe she was psychopath. So, you know, maybe that kind of person, um, it's such a, it's such a different kind of mindset that is, is, is really, Maybe it's just impossible for somebody who um, has a conscience. Uh, He's not a psychopath. There's just no, right. There's just, there was nothing. What was your first role that you were recognized for? Like what you would go out to lunch and people would come up for, up to you? Uh, well, it's a slow build um, always. And so it's really hard to say what is that one moment. But I did notice a big shift when I guess, well, Greece too was a big shift. Um, first it was, it was, it was Greece too. Then it was Scarface. And then it was, and then when Witches of Eastwick came out, it was another kind of, you know, I noticed it in um, sort of seismic sort of shifts like that. And I remember when, I, after I'd filmed Witches of Eastwick and then I went away for a while and I was out of the United States and I came back and it was just different. All of a sudden, my visibility was a lot higher. As an actress, is that exciting? Is it scary? Is it both? What is that like? It's both. I think it, it's both. Well, I think it scared me for a long time. I think it, um, so I, I sort of, and I, I'm still a little bit that way. I kind of, I'm not really that in touch with it in a weird way. I'm sort of disconnected from it. Um, and I, I sort of live my, my, my life pretending I'm not really famous in a weird way. Well, you know, <laughs> that's actually great advice. I, I, I like dissociating. I will say this. We've done a lot of these shows and a lot of different kinds of people over the years have come in. And I was, and I just text Lauren when I saw, as I wanted to let her know you were coming in. I said, Hey, here, super cool. Just, just you. Right. And sometimes you see like these entourages show up and all these things and it's such a production. And for somebody that's reached the pinnacle of success and notoriety that you have, I just think it's, it, it, it it's such a juxtaposition because mm-hmm. you, you don't expect it. Right. It's like, you've had, I mean, you've been in all of these incredible movies and in, in a way like you but I want to point out is like, you're, you're just, I, it's not the image that people would think of a, like a huge mm. Hollywood actress. Does that make sense? Um, yes. Um, I forget that. I mean, you know, there are times when you have that entourage, if you're doing a huge press sure, junket sure. and you're, you know, yeah. um, but I, you know, when I can, I just like to keep things really simple Casual. and super like, you know, I, I get anxious if there's like too much going on around me and, you know, when you need it, you need it. And it's a relief. And, um, I just actually did Jimmy Fallon and my, my glam squad was not available. And they were, you know, cause it was a book, you know, when I booked it, they had already booked something and it wasn't really planned that far in advance. And so, you know, I just thought, Oh, I'll just do it myself. And I did. <laughs> It's oh just like, my gosh. This is... See, Lauren, <gasps> it can be done no, no, by yourself, uh, No, no, no. I just think that this is so crazy, the world we live in now, to hear you say that, that you did it yourself. Well, I'd much rather have had my glam squad, trust <clears throat> me, in that sort of, you know, um, instance. But, um, but uh, you know, and I used to do my own hair and all the time. I used to do it on my own makeup a lot on when I early, early, I did my own makeup because takes a you know it just took a while for people to get to know my face and then I just wasn't and then you're in your trailer and you're like rubbing this off and you're redoing this and I just that was too stressful and so I um um 
you know, I knew how to deal with my puffy eyes. <laughs> Like nobody else. I don't think puffy eyes. I can't believe you're saying that you're puffy. No, I'm a puffy girl. I am. Oh. I go. I go puffy. When yeah, I like get wine, it. Wine, forget it. it. I know. One Four. glass of wine. No. Nope. One. Yep. Nope. So puffy the nope. next day. Can't. When I fly. Nope. Nothing. <laughs> yeah, we just flew in this morning. Yeah. When a, a theme that comes up on this show a lot of time is people write in wondering about how to find confidence or how to build confidence. Mm -hmm. When you're starting out in your career and then all of a sudden you're sharing the same screen, sharing the same script with someone like Al Pacino, do you go in and do, are you fully confident or do you still have some of that imposter syndrome? And how does that, what does that look like at that point in time? I cried myself to sleep almost every night on Scarface. Okay, because that's the, how confident I was. Because the theme was. was so dark or because the <laughs> acting was so, I mean, that was an intense movie. No, it was very intense. Well, you know, the auditioning process was really intense and grueling. And I think I auditioned for any, I don't know, it was like two months, maybe it felt like, a year, but and when you auditioned, did you know it was across from him, or did you just you just liked the 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 story or the script? No, I was auditioning with him. Okay, you were with yeah. Him. Okay, okay, yeah, and and they were auditioning a lot of people, and it was obviously a huge deal for me. And um, I, you know, Al wanted someone else, okay. understandably so. I mean, you know, I'm the girl from Greece too. You know what I mean? I was just sort of. So, um, and had you met before that? And no, no I'd never okay. met him. No, oh, well, no, so that's, I, did, that's I hadn't met anyone. I hadn't met anyone. So anyway, I, I did a really good reading for the casting director and the director and then had to meet Al, went to New York. It was this big, like a lot of people. And I just got so nervous, not because of anything. He's the most lovely, kind, generous person but, you know, I was surrounded by all of these seasoned actors and um, I just didn't have a, a, a lot of experience under my feet. And um, with and it was a series of coming back and coming back. And with each time I had to come back, I got worse and worse and worse because it, it's like the you know, the thing that will undermine an actor quicker than anything is fear. And by the, by the time I was so bad, you know, and it was, I was like, I know I'm bad. And I, I kind of, when I, d and then I didn't get the part and they said, bye-bye. You know, I said, I'm sorry. I know it's not your fault. <sighs> then like a month later, they called me back for a screen test. Just, and I was, it was mixed because I was kind of by that point, so happy to be out of my misery and I was being tortured. What were you so scared of, if you don't mind me asking? Was it just because it, they were so seasoned and you Would were... Would you be scared to oh, work with Al Pacino? Yeah, yeah, no shit. Of course I'd be what scared. But mean? I just, I'm trying to kind of like understand like what the main I mean, concern was outside of that he's Al Pacino. That and, I was going to be bad. Okay. That I was going to embarrass myself. You know, that I I wouldn't be able to deliver. And um, so, and I didn't as it turned out. So um, uh, anyway, by the time I showed up for the screen test... Uh, I, I had, I had s s such a lack of hope that I, that I would ever get this part. I was so chill. I mean, I just walked in and I probably did my own makeup. In fact, I think I did. Um, and, and I think I did my own hair even maybe. And, um, and all of a sudden I could act again. All of a sudden it all came back because I didn't care. And I did I did a really good screen test, and that's how I got the part. Whoa! And that part, I mean, people still. Michael and I were you. I was you for Halloween. I mean, people uh, people. <laughs> well, are obsessed. the look the look is super iconic. Yeah, oh, yeah. it's so iconic. Yeah. I mean, you can watch that movie now, and you're it's. Now I didn't obsessed. do mm, that. Wasn't the hair I had for the screen test? By the way, I did not do my hair and makeup for the for the film. I may have done my eye makeup. I think I did my eye makeup. I mean. For the film, but I had, I had, a, I had, a, I had a team. After you do that movie, though, I mean, that's got to be surreal when you're doing press and and it comes out and people are just obsessed. Yeah, it was surreal. So, what was the next movie that you fell in love with after Scarface? Is there a movie that you look back on that you're like, this was this was the best experience? I loved it. I loved how it turned out. Everything. No, I've liked so many. I've been really lucky. I've been so fortunate um, with the the filmmakers that I've worked with and the actors I've worked with. Um, 
I always think of Married to the Mob. Work, I just loved working on that film. Uh, I loved working with, with Jonathan Demme. Um, and I love Angela DeMarco. I just had so much fun being her. Um, and I loved Fabius Baker Boys. Again, loved working with the Bridges Brothers and Steve Clovis directing. Susie Diamond was a real diamond in the rough. I loved her. Um, and I think, you know, probably playing those types of characters are closer to maybe who I am. Is it, I assume it's easier to play characters who are closer to you. Yes and no. Sometimes it's, if it's too close in, in an emotional way, it's sometimes you're your own psyche gets in your way of tapping into those places. When you're doing White Oleander and you said it was the farthest from you and there's like a dark energy around the role, does that take a toll on your regular life? I, I, I can't, I wasn't happy. <laughs> I mean, I was, I was counting the days that it would end because I just, it was torture for me. So the it, the vibration of the role seeps into your life because a little bit. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm I'm not the kind of actor that stays in character all the time. Um, it's like Daniel Day Lewis showing up as Abe Lincoln to the yeah. yeah right. Like yeah, no, I'm of. not like that. I'm not like that. But um, I have. My husband has said to me, "But you do disappear a little bit, you know, when you work." Well, it takes so much energy, yeah. and you almost don't have the capacity when you're done playing the mm. character. I would assume. Well, it's that I lock in and even from the moment that I I sign on to do a part in a movie, it could be six months, it could be a year, I'm 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 thinking about it all the time. It's sort of there. And so I'm, that's another reason why my agents call me Dr. No. I'm always a little bit resistant, actually a lot resistant, to commit to things um, because once I commit, it's just... Um, working on me and working on me. And I like to have just a blank slate ahead of me um, because a little bit of that performance anxiety starts to kick in, even though it's a year away. Ooh. Yeah. What do you think um, the, uh, the traits that are necessary to have I guess not just in this career path, but in any career path, like how do you, because you've stayed relevant for so long and you've been in so many, like, what do you, what do you think those traits are for people that are listening? All right. I am hearing a lot of behind the scenes talk about at home ketamine therapy. I've talked to a bunch of scientists, doctors, specialists about it, and they introduced me to this company called Mindbloom. So Mindbloom is a guided ketamine therapy. It's the leader in at-home ketamine therapy for people looking for a new way to treat their anxiety and depression. Obviously, it's not a one-size-fits-all, and obviously it's not just one tool that can help the process of healing anxiety and depression, but I think this is an interesting concept to look at if you're struggling. Basically, this company, Mindbloom, combines science-backed medicine with a guided treatment plan, and you should know it's affordable and fast-acting. So to start, what they do is you take this MindBloom online assessment and you schedule a video consultation with a licensed clinician. And if you're approved, then you'll work with MindBloom on your specific treatment plan. They make you like a customized kit with medicine, a journal, and even treatment materials. And after two sessions, 87% of MindBloom clients reported improvements in depression and 85% reported improvements in anxiety. It's time to enter your next chapter in mental health and well-being, achieve transformational outcomes with MindBloom. Right now, MindBloom is offering our listeners $100 off your first six-session program when you sign up at mindbloom.com slash TSC and use promo code TSC at checkout. Go to mindbloom.com slash TSC, promo code TSC for $100 off your first six-session program today. That's mindbloom.com slash TSC, promo code TSC. Having a toddler and a husband who gets hypoglycemic easy, I have to have snacks and I have to be really strategic with the snacks. So what I did in my refrigerator is I made it over and I made a shelf just for snacks. And I made sure that the snacks that my toddler can reach are good snacks. Like I wanted to make sure they were organized for her so she could just open the fridge, grab something. And also for Michael when he's running out the door. And one of those snacks in the fridge is Perfect Bar. So 
The one that's the most famous at our house, I say it every time, is the dark chocolate chip peanut butter with the sea salt. It is absolutely delicious. Like, it honestly tastes like you're having some kind of sweet. It has like a cookie dough texture. It's creamy, full of flavor. I'm just telling you, this bar is legit. But it's made with freshly ground nut butter, organic honey, and 20 organic superfoods. Plus, and this was like the real thing that I was into, it has 17 grams of protein per bar. And the mini ones that Zaza usually has has six grams of protein. So they're getting protein, which we love. This is a great snack after you've worked out, if you're on the go, if you're traveling. I mean, I know whenever I go to the airport, I always bring my own snacks because I feel like there's nothing healthy there. So this is a great one to bring on the go. Perfect Bar knows it will be love at first bite. So for a limited time, they're offering you a chance to try the refrigerated protein bars for free. So here's how it works. You sign up for their email or text and upload a picture of your receipt from your local grocery store, and they'll reimburse you for the cost of one bar directly into your Venmo or PayPal account. Pretty cool, right? All you have to do is go to perfectsnacks.com slash skinny to get a free Perfect Bar today. That's perfectsnacks.com slash skinny. You get a free Perfect Bar today. Happy snacking. If you are going to order meals, okay, and you're going to get them delivered to your house, you have to go with Saqqara. They just know what they're doing. First of all, Saqqara delivers science-backed, plant-rich nutritional programs and wellness essentials right to your door. So they have ready-to-eat meals that are nutritionally designed to deliver results from weight management to easing bloating or even boosting energy and clearer skin. Here's the deal. Not only do they have incredible organic meals delivered straight to your door, I'm a huge fan, but they also have tons of wellness essentials on their site. So you've seen this on my stories, but I'm obsessed with their chlorophyll. I'll do it in the morning with lemon. I'll put ginger in there. Sometimes I'll put mint and ice, and it just makes your water a little bit better. I also always bring my chlorophyll if I'm going to high altitude climates because it really, really helps you not get altitude sickness. It's wild. Actually, a listener of this podcast told me this and I couldn't believe it. It's like a cure for altitude sickness. So get those detox drops, the chlorophyll ones. And then also while you're on their site, pick up their beauty water drops. They're so good in water and they're just like minerals. So you're going to get the minerals and the chlorophyll. And then if you're looking to not crash diet this year and you don't want to deprive yourself, but you want to make sure that you're being healthy and efficient with your time, definitely check out Sakara. Right now, Sakara is offering all Skinny Confidential him and her listeners 20% off your first order. So you're going to go to sakara.com slash skinny or enter code skinny at checkout. That's sakara, S-A-K-A-R-A dot com slash skinny. You get 20% off your first order. Sakara.com slash skinny. Um, but I think I've been really lucky to play some really, I mean, some some really iconic characters, you know, like Susie Diamond and Catwoman and um, Angela DeMarco and Elvira. And, you know, I think, um, honestly, a lot of that is my legacy, in, in, in other words. So they, those characters stay relevant, I think. Sure. But I guess what I'm saying is like, it can't all just be right character. There's got to be, I don't know whether it's a discipline or a trade or a practice or a routine because, you know, so many people, especially in entertainment, they kind of come and go. Mm-hmm. I mean, we've well, seen I you- disappeared for a little while. I mean, I disappeared for about five years. It was just to take a break or? Um, I was having kids and we moved. Uh, we, we relocated in Northern California. And um, where I, when, my, when I started dreaming up Henry Rose was, was then when I wasn't really working. And I was also sort of this in this in-between place, you know. I sort of didn't feel like I was really a leading lady. I wasn't a grandma yet, but I, I wasn't also like an ingenue. I wasn't sort of, and I was having babies and, um, and, and relocating the family was, uh, um, I really underestimated what that meant. Um, was the reasoning you just didn't want to raise here because we just relocated too. And we actually just, we live in Texas and go back and forth between here, but we had two kids as well. Yeah. And so a part of the reasoning of relocation was that for sure. Yeah. I, I think it's, uh, it's look, it's challenging no matter where you raise kids. I didn't set out to, um, stop working or it, it, it wasn't my plan, but I became <laughs> so difficult, you know, in terms of my prerequisites in terms of, well, where does it shoot? How long does it shoot? What time of year does it shoot? Um, 
you know, can I bring the kids? Is it during the school year? Um, and then it, it was just too difficult to hire me, honestly. And I was okay with that. So, um, and honestly, I, I didn't even realize how, how much time had gone by. And I was kind of reading things on the way and there was just nothing that really I liked enough that prompted me to want to leave home, leave the kids. Because at this point, when they were little, when they were really small, you can just take them with you. I literally would take Claudia to restaurants with me and put her car seat on the table. I mean, I just took her everywhere. And then once they're in school, I just didn't want to disrupt their, their, their life and um, the routines that they were establishing and the friends they were making. And so, uh, and then for a while I would just do things if they were longer shoots in the summer and it just, and then it just became so complicated. Um, and then, and then, so I remember my, actually it was my kids. I said, mom, are you ever going to go back to work? I said, what do you mean? Isn't it great that I'm home? They're like, well, you know, and you know, they actually love to travel because they grew up traveling. And, um, so, so we're in Northern California and anyway, you know, and it was after they were born um, that I really started to look at the world in a different way. And I started to look at the world through their eyes. And I started to see a lot of children being diagnosed with, I think, were considered more adult associated diseases. I don't know if you guys have noticed that. Sure. But like, and on serious medications and at really young ages, at really young yeah, ages, yeah, yeah. more and more. And at the same time, my, that didn't, that didn't happen. I mean, maybe once in a while, but when we were kids, I can't remember, and maybe you didn't hear about it, but I can't remember it to this degree at all. No yeah, way. Yeah. Unless it was going on and we weren't aware of it, but I do think it's more. And then around the same time, my father and my best friend were both diagnosed with cancer. And, and then I looked around and I'm just like seeing so much cancer. I'm what is going on? I know there are, are, of course, biological um, components to, you know, to that, but there has to be something else going on. There has to be something environmental going on. I started, I started really um, investigating and doing a deeper dive into our environment and, and the things that we were being exposed to, started looking at our personal care, looking at ingredients. Now, this was 25 years ago. So there wasn't a lot out there. There wasn't a lot of information. They still weren't really labeling ingredients. Um, yeah, we just had somebody on and we were talking about back then how you had to actually like go searching for an organic store, searching for the organic. Yeah. Like it was, it yeah. was just all that kind of, you know, yeah. manufactured food or whatever. And there was this constant and also to find product, you could find some products but, you know, they just didn't perform yeah. in the way that the toxic stuff did. And so I found myself as a parent, for instance, okay, I know this sunblock, they're not going to get skin cancer because this is really going to protect their skin from the sun. But what about these chemicals in it? And are they going to get another kind of cancer because I'm exposing them to these chemicals? And as a mom, every day I was having to choose between safety and performance and in my own life, whether it was the makeup I was using for work or the hair products you're using. And it, I, I, I mean, I just really went down the, the rabbit hole. I, of course, I couldn't work. I was spending all my time looking up ingredients. So um, anyway, one day I stumbled upon the um, Environmental Working Group Skin Deep Database. Do you guys know? No, but I'm, we're going to okay. learn now. Okay, you guys, this is such an incredible resource and you need to know about it. So, is it going to scare me? Uh, yeah, we, it's okay. going to scare you. Oh, but it's going to give you. Initially, it's going to scare you, but it's going to give you a, a, um, a, a resource to find safer options for your family and for yourself. I mean, it really is. It's you can look up the personal care products you're using. You can you and a lot of times they have them on on the site already, and they've already rated them for high hazard level. So the higher the number the more hazardous they are. And say their website one more time. It's, it's, it's the environmental working groups, cosmetics, skin deep database. And is it only for cosmetics and skin products or is it for everything? 
Well, the the um, the environmental working group, they also rate, I think they just started recently doing household uh, cleaners and that kind of thing, but they have a lot of, you know, they have a lot of studies on the website. It's just such a wonderful source of information. I'm going to be real Debbie Downer here for a little bit, but, um, you know, the EU has banned over 1,300 ingredients in their personal care and beauty products. You want to guess how many the United States have banned? How many? Eight. Ooh. We just did a whole episode oh. with the, do you know what Dry Farms Wine, Dry Farm Wine is? Have you heard of it? Mm-hmm. It's just like a clean organic. And he came on and told us there's something like 77 additives that they don't have to disclose in regular wine yeah. in this country. And you're just like crazy so, yeah. stuff. Y- you're, you said like you're you're in the makeup chair. You're doing your own makeup. Mm-hmm. You're doing your own beauty. How do you even decipher this? This well, is a lot of information. You have two kids. I mean, I know it's a lot. It's a lot. And and uh, one of the things that I at the time remembering when I when I started to to really get into this, I, I just thought I, I, if I had only known this, When I was a young, because I was thinking about these young adolescent men and women, boys and girls who are just getting into, you know, they're, they're going through puberty and they're trying all these different products and they're using cologne and they're using perfume and they're using makeup and they're doing, they're everything, everything. And it's exciting and they should be able to have fun with all of those things, but they're just dousing themselves with products that the government has not deemed to be safe. So so with all this information, when you get this information. How exciting to go back uh, and no, go through our medicine no, I cabinet. Told, I told Michelle when you weren't in the room that this morning he's in, he's in the tiny bathroom next to my daughter, who's two, spraying his hairspray, well, listen, putting I his cologne. To, I mean, no, I had to look make at a his hair. Look at how make, much hairspray listen, is in this Michelle, hair. I this is a hormone I knew, disruptor. I knew you were coming I'm in I'm not hooking up to, with you until you get done with it. Get that out of my face. Listen, Lord, it's not every day you... Interview Catwoman, and I had to get this lick back well, going. Now, it's possible his hairspray is fine. Is it aerosol though? That's not it's good. Probably not it's good. the worst. Yeah. Yeah. So that's not good. Not. You're breathing it in. Ugh, you're, my, it's like it's like clouding ugh. the room. My she mother doesn't and like father, this. No one likes my this. My dad busted into the room, slammed the lights on, screamed, "Get up!" And then my mom hit the Windex all over the glass. That's yeah. how I grew up. So yeah, same. I, you know. Oh yeah, same. I'm right there. I mean, I was yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a painter too, so I'm you know I'm sure my brain has all kinds of weird spots on it. What do you do with the information though? Where's the place that you started first? Did you start with st- your beauty, your makeup? What? I started with the family. I started with it with, you know, I mean, I used to, I used to make our own bug spray, um, you know, but, you know, using a lot, using some, some essential oils and, and, um, <laughs> um, and, but I really relied on, on the environmental working group, um, a lot once I once I discovered their website. Um, so, you know, I so anyway, they what would happen is I would look up ingredients over and over again, and they would be seem to be fine and safe, and then all of a sudden, fragrance would ping really high on hazard level. Just fragrance in general. Just or? fragrance, because okay. this is what people don't understand: is fragrance can be listed as one ingredient, and it is you, a lot of the time, it's be, because of the trade secret thing. So can be listed as one ingredient on a box labeled as one ingredient. But that that one word fragrance is really consisted of any number of ingredients pulled from over 3,000 ingredients that are not regulated by the government. And they're not transparent about it. And the other thing is, is that the thing that I learned with my work with EWG and developing this fragrance is, look, naturals are really beautiful. I mean, we all, you know, everybody uses them. You can develop such beautiful, complex fragrances, but, you know, not all essential oils are created equal either. There are some of them that... um, um, have their own naturally occurring hormone disruptors in them. And so when you think about them in a really, really concentrated form, you know, they're not safe for everyone. And 30% of the population have, have some pretty severe allergies to fragrance. Um, have they done studies and, on showing which kind of hormones and how and with which sex is being interrupted the most? Or have they not 
Well, I mean, whoever's using the most products. Okay. And so, you know, um, is it raising or lowering or what? You know, one of, I read a, I read a study that, um, I think it was done at Berkeley where they, um, they're, they're discovering, um, there's some evidence, I, I, I would say that, um, that when a person, a young person, whether it's a woman or a man is exposed to these hormone disruptors during puberty, if you think about it, your hormones are going crazy. And when they're disrupted at that time, it can set the stage for breast cancer later on in life. So it's, you know, I feel like it's also young people that I really want to reach. I mean, there's so many little things too. Like when you're using Tide, you're sleeping on that pillow for nine hours or eight hours Mm -hmm. every single day. So, and you're just breathing it in. Especially the scented one. The scented one. I mean, it's crazy. And scent is in everything. It's crazy. And then even I was thinking when I was breastfeeding my son, I put, I I told you this, I put perfume on and then I'm I'm breastfeeding him. And then I'm like, oh my God, he's sucking on the perfume. It's when you really start going and don't get me started on dry cleaning. Oh, don't. Oh my God. I didn't even think about that. What's wrong with dry cleaning? Well, dry cleaning is way more. A lot of chemicals. So what do you do instead of dry cleaning? You steam it? Well, there are green green dry cleaners. Oh, I'm And then I just try to, you know, hand wash whatever. I don't absolutely have to dry clean. And also I feel like cleaning products are, I mean, you you come and you clean the space you're eating on. When I'm at a restaurant and they come over with Windex and they're spraying it, I mean, it's just like you could go on and on and on and on. (laughs) Gee, I've never had anybody spray Windex at me at a She eats at some really shitty places. I don't <laughs> your know where she's going your to. mom sprays Windex while I'm no, eating at your house. My mom's a different story. She's got the vacuum going with the reaching thing above my head. Mm-hmm. She's probably going to be upset I said it, but sorry, mom. But, it's true. But th- you really can spiral with all these different things. Yeah, you can. And so you have to, you know, the you know our bodies are meant to process a certain amount of um, assaults. And we do pretty good. But when we get overloaded is when, you know, we, our, our bodies just break down. And, um, and so I think you just have, it's percentages. You're not going to live a perfectly clean life. Um, chemicals are everywhere. And that's why, you know, we are Henry Rose is really, we are a product that is is very modern and sophisticated and we are a combination of safe synthetics and 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 safe naturals. Why did you decide to start with perfume? What inspired Because that? it was okay, so living up north. Um and um because you know as as I started doing my research again fragrance seemed to be very toxic at least that's how I understood the high hazard level what I, what I came to understand is actually, it's not necessarily the case. It's that they're completely like, it's the last black box of ingredient transparency. And it was because of that, because of that lack of transparency of not, and, and the lack of ingredient disclosure and because of the history of some harmful ingredients in all of beauty, all of personal care. And that includes, you know, hormone disruptors, carcinogens, allergens, um, and, you know, some chem- some that are known to cause neurotoxicity. So because of that history and not knowing what's in them, they just gave it airing on the side of safety, a high hazard level. That's why when we, w- with our work with, we, we got the EWG verification and the cradle to cradle certification. And you have to have total transparency with your ingredients. You have to have toxology reports in order to get EWG verified for safety. They have the most, I guess, the most uh, safety criteria um, really in the world because they also pull from every single like banned ingredient list because all over the world, they're different in different countries and they, they pull from all of them. And that goes on. They, that's one of the one of the tools that they use in terms of rating the safety of an ingredient. Recently, I went to Cabo and I wanted a bunch of neons and some lilacs. 
So I actually rented some clothes. And you can rent them through Fashion Pass. So this is a clothing rental service where you get unlimited rentals for one flat price. And what I like about this service specifically is they have the best brands. So they have like For Love and Lemons, Free People, Show Me Your Moo Moo, all different kinds of brands. You guys can go on their site and look. And you can swap out your items as many times you want as like in a month. So basically you can get new clothes every single week. And if you're someone who travels a lot like me, this is great because you go to different areas. Say you're traveling somewhere tropical, you can like totally mix up your closet. A lot of my closet is black, nudes, neutrals, whites. And so to be able to add a bunch of color, it was easy to like rent something. Oh, and the best part of all of this, like what really saved my life is that the shipping is super fast. So you can like decide last minute what you want and they take care of dry cleaning. So you literally just send it back in a pre-labeled bag they give you when you're done and then you get to choose new items. It, it honestly could not be easier. I just think that this is like the future of clothes, especially with social media. If you want to like mix up what you're wearing, I mean, this is a great way to do it. You should also know if you love something and you want to keep it, you get a huge discount. It's like 30 to 70 percent off. All right. We have a code for you, a special discount. If you go to fashionpass.com and use code skinny at checkout, you get $60 off your first month. So you can literally try it for $29. That's unlimited rentals for just $29 with code skinny. One of the questions that I get asked the most in my DMs is which supplements I recommend. And obviously I'm not a doctor. I can't recommend like a blanket supplement for everyone, but I can tell you the supplements that Michael and I love. And one of those brands is Symbiotica. I honestly cannot say enough good things about this brand because it's liposomal. So what you do is you take these little packets and you squeeze them in your mouth and then they absorb immediately into your bloodstream. I started with the vitamin B12 and also their D3, which has K in it, and I fell in love. And then I moved on to the vitamin C. I'm just a fan of this brand specifically because they're very sophisticated when it comes to their formulations. Everything has science behind it and everything is about filling in nutritional gaps that result from our modern day diet. So there's a lot of gaps in the diet and they really focused in on that. If I were to start with one of their products, I by far would recommend the vitamin C. I'm obsessed. Zaza likes it. It's just a vitamin that I think is is easy to start with and it tastes good and I feel better when I take it. I like to take it in the morning. I'm a huge fan of like starting my day off on the right foot. Sometimes I put it in water and sometimes I just squeeze it right into my mouth. And of course, we have a code. You can use code SKINNY at checkout for 15% off your first purchase. This is an addition to custom bundle discounts, so you get 45% off. Create your custom bundle at symbiotica.com and get 30% off. Recently, we had the ring concierge herself, Nicole, on the podcast. She's been on twice because she's such a hit. People are obsessed. She has so many good tips when it comes to self-gifting or getting gifts. Like, honestly... <laughs> The diamonds that she wears when she comes in here are you like can't stop staring. She has like stacked rings and gold hoops and a little diamond necklace. She just is a real walking advertisement when it comes to jewelry. And I've had the opportunity to pick her brain. And if you're going to buy jewelry or you want someone to buy jewelry for you, you have to check her out. How I would go about it is stalking her Instagram at the ring concierge and like screenshotting it and sending it to whoever you want to get you something or just screenshot it and save it for yourself and favorite it and get something for yourself when you have a moment. Okay, so what I have from her is I have a super thin tennis bracelet and then I have a thicker, chunkier one. And the thicker one we designed together. So she like worked with me over text message to get exactly what I wanted. And the experience was amazing because I really got to pick something that was unique to me and really zone in on the color and the clarity and the cut and she was very patient with me. So I appreciated it. I wear these two tennis bracelets all the time. You'll probably see them on my stories. She also has like tennis necklaces, all the bling, all her jewelry, gold hoops, stacked rings, all the things. And of course, we have a code for you. You're going to want to send this to your significant other. That's code 20TSC for 20% off fine jewelry which is so generous. This excludes bridal, classic diamond studs, and gift cards. That's code 20TSC for 20% off fine jewelry. You're going to go to ringconcierge.com. How do you pick the scents? Is, are you really hands-on with when you pick the fragrance? I guess it's not fragrance. What do you, what do you call it? Yeah, you call it fragrance. You can call it fragrance. Yeah, yeah it's okay. fragrance. Okay. Yeah. So how do you pick the scents? 
Um, well, the very first, it's, it's, it's sort of evolved over time and, um, all of them are, are based on Ascent Memory and the first five that we launched with in 2019, um, were, um, based on my, my Ascent Memories and, um, I didn't really understand the, the, the impact and the power of that at the time, um, and I was going after, I started out saying, again, frustration of having to choose on a daily basis, performance and safety. And over time, like now 10 years go by, I'm not wearing fragrance. I've eliminated it from my life. I love it. I miss it. And I thought, okay, well, maybe I can, maybe I can try to see if it's possible to even d to do this. Can you do, I missed I missed that fine fragrance scent that we all know, that sophisticated scent. I could find, honestly, a lot of things that smelled like bug spray. Right. And that wasn't what I was going after. Oh, the bougie scent. The, I know exactly I wanted that, that yeah. bougie yeah. scent. And I wanted it to be transparent and I wanted it to be safe. And so I reached out to EWG, asked them, would they collaborate with me? They said, no, we can't do that. It's a conflict of interest, but, but we're here to support you in any way that we can. So um, I, I, I went to the, a, the cos a couple of cosmetic companies. They didn't understand what I was talking about. Um, anyway, cut to 10 years go by. I, I've tried, I've, I've tried, I've failed. I've tried, I've failed over those 10 years. Finally, about five years ago, I thought, I want to give this one more shot. It was New Year's Day. I remember I was said, woke up and I said, what do you want to do this year? What do you want to do? I thought, okay, I'm going to give that one more try. Got in touch with um, Ken Cook at EWG again. Hey, Ken, I'm going to give this thing one more try. And he said, you know, actually we can help you now because we're starting our verified program. We realized that we needed to have something in place to help brands like yours who want to develop safer products and cleaner and, and transparent products, but they need they need some guardrails, they need some help and they need some guidance. And so along with EWG and they said, and he said, you know, you might want to consider um, this, this, the, this clean movement has really taken hold. It's really gained a lot of momentum. You might want to consider approaching the fragrance house houses directly. And I, I was sort of, I thought that was nuts. I thought they, they why would they want to, do this, you know, and, and as it turns out, they did. Um, and ultimately I ended up working with the international food and fragrance IFF. Um, and they had already, and this is how cradle to cradle came into it. And they had already been working with cradle to cradle. They had been challenged to develop a fragrance that met their strict criteria. And, when I walked in for the meeting, they had it sitting on the table and I burst into tears because this had been maybe 15, 10, 15 years of, of just being told by everyone I talked to, you'll never get the fragrance industry to be transparent. This will never happen. Why are you, why are you, <laughs> why are you choosing the hardest category um, do makeup, do, you know, do personal care, do skin care, do, but don't do fragrance. And, and it was because it, it, I couldn't find it again, clean space. You could, you could start to find cleaner products that actually performed, but you still, you couldn't find fragrance. It was the one thing you just couldn't find. It oh. was still completely untransparent. And again, nothing that what that smelled awesome and bougie. <laughs> Are you going to change your cologne? We need a guy. I mean, I we need be, something for guys. To be honest, I it's really, for guys. It's genderless. What are you talking about? It's genderless. About? I'm, oh I'm, my gosh! Listen, you've I didn't me. know I'm, that. No, I'm, yeah. you convinced me. Oh, it's genderless. And smell also, this. Smell this. Oh, now smell. this is I layered. <laughs> okay, this is I layered this right. this morning. Okay, ready? All right, all right. Come here. Come here. Come Get on. that nose over here. Oh. <laughs> What do you mean it's actually pretty nice? I, I think for men, I mean, yeah, I'll wear it. Yeah. I would wear it. Michael's going to wear. I have to kind of take a deep breath here for a second, Michelle. It's gender. <laughs> See, I grew up loving men. <laughs> hold on, okay? 
I grew up. I grew up, is that weird? No, Smell no. me. That I guess that is kind of weird. No, it's I'll be weird. in a I'll be in a restaurant and I'll I'll do me. that like people at the table and David will be like, "Honey, this is looking really weird." <laughs> Hold on, I gotta go. I gotta go write my I gotta go write my diary for a second. <laughs> I want to ask you. So it so sounds, this is layered char, which is kind of a smoky, ambery, I like it. tonka bean, and it's layered with windows down, which is more citrusy and a little and fresh and. And clean and and the two of them together, the opposites are what makes a really interesting, complex. Well, now scent. I want to smell. Yeah, yeah, of course. Got a little jealous there, huh? Wow, I was, I'm I'm actually shocked. I was going to that, ask. Wait, you. Well, I will. That smells expensive. Yes, they all do. I was expecting more of like um Bug like spray. you said uh, Bug just spray. grass root. <laughs> no. It grass. does it smells bougie. It's, more like it is earth. bougie. It smells like Hotel Eden Rock. It is bougie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> smells very good, you guys. Wow, that smells very 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 good. It's you know, so, I should have brought you guys products. No, it's okay. I'm going to I'm going to get some. I'm going to try it. I'm going to put some on his nightstand and get rid of everything he has. I was going to It sounds like a lot of the catalyst for maybe some of this was having children and being, you know, yeah. obviously be, being aware of what you're giving them. But also, it sounds like you have been interested in wellness and health yourself. But then I, we, we have this quote, our audience wanted us. She said, when I was in my 20s, I lived on Marlboro Lights and Coca-Cola. And for the young people listening, me included at the time, like, I think when you're young, you feel you're invincible. You could do anything mm-hmm. and you can kind of treat mm-hmm. your body in any kind of way. When did you start to get interested in taking care of yourself and in, in wellness and better ingredients? Yeah, I remember I was... A friend of mine was, she was in into kind of wellness where I was in my early 20s, I guess. And and I was over there and she was she had this trainer there and I was probably smoking and drinking a Coca-Cola. And he looked at me and he said, you know, everything you do today is going to show up later in life. Oh. And I went, <laughs> um, <Yeah>. so... <laughs> I can imagine the look you gave him. It's in Scarface. There's a certain yeah. look that you gave him. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, I didn't, I didn't, you know, and that is for me, one of the f- first things that came to mind when I started learning all of this is I've spent my life poisoning myself. I have, I have exposed myself. I mean, not just cigarettes and Coca-Cola, but all of it. And, you know, um, and it was really, you know, I had quit smoking by the time my, my kids were born. And was I still drinking Coca-Cola? Uh, I don't know about that. Um, but I, I, before I became a parent, I just, I, I was clueless. I was just really clueless. And yeah, I just felt invincible. And then you get these little babies and you just, you all of a sudden want to protect them and you're, your world and the way you look at the world just changes. And it was through them that I reaped the benefits of taking better care of myself. That makes Um, a ton of sense. And, you know, it just really makes me want to reach, um, you know, young people, adolescent people. um, And is that, is there a gym in the building? (laughs) I just heard that. Yeah, I just heard that. It's a little bump. Yeah, it's gone now. Oh, that was, um, it was a bump. I think, but, it's, I think um, it's still my heart beating from when I smelled you. <laughs> but, but I do think that the younger generations now are so much more aware and into it and they really are demanding transparency and they want to know about sustainability. They want to know the story behind the the products that they're they're purchasing. I think, you know, they, they are concerned um, about where their dollars are going. Um, you know, they've got their QR codes out and they're looking up ingredients and it's really, it's, it, we can learn a lot from I don't them. remember one time doing that until I was probably in my late twenties. I just like, you know, we grew up in that era of like late eighties, nineties, early two thousands. like this. We just didn't have this kind of information at our fingertips. Mm-hmm. Nobody was really paying attention. You're probably too young. Do you remember a magazine called Utney? Is it still around? Utney? Mm-mm. U-T-N-E. I don't, it's probably not still around, but it was the only thing. It was like a real kind of left wing um um magazine uh and it 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 talked a lot about this it was it was ta- it was talking a lot about this but it was really the only publication that was printing just too ahead of its time yeah 
<laughs> yeah. It says here that you were vegan for years and now you're paleo. Uh, you know what? I am not anything right now. I just eat clean. I mean, most of the time, you know, uh, <laughs> got to have a little fun. Um, and, um, you know, I just avoid things I know are not healthy for me. Treat myself every now and then. Um, but I'm, um, yeah, I don't call myself anything. I, I did guess you it, like being vegan? I did, but I, I wasn't eating a healthy vegan diet. That's why I'm not vegan, because I feel like yeah. I would just be eating pasta. I ate just carb. I just, which I love, by the way. I was so excited. I'm like, oh my God, I get to eat all these carbs. And then after a couple of years, I just wasn't feeling good and looking good and talk about bloat. <laughs> it's really, you know, like well, getting really bloated in weird this. ways. Yeah, it's hard yeah. to get the, the I'm, protein. I I love meat and I'm getting very serious about where I get my meat. And there's this place called Force of Nature. Oh, okay. They have the best meat. And I think I think it's Michelle approved. I feel like it's in line with Henry Rose. Okay. Force of Nature meat, if you guys are looking for a meat company. Well, it's all sustainable and grass fed and okay, responsible. Okay, grass fed really important. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing, you know, they do all these studies about meat and the, and the harmful effects of red meat in particular. But I never see them differentiate between grass fed red meat and, and right? And, sure. and the kind that is filled with antibiotics and hormones and and corn fed. And I, I, there, I think there has to be a difference. Well, if you look at all, I mean, in some cultures, like Mongolia, for example, or even many of the Native American tribes, they were, many like thrived off of just meat, right? And raw meat. And, and, and I think it's important to understand that distinction of these factory farmed, poor yeah. practice places compared to something that's you know, sustainable and responsible. It's horrifying when you see those. Oh yeah. And so you wouldn't, who would want to, I mean, if you, yeah. if you see that, who would want to actually eat that? I mean, many are yeah. kind of forced to because they don't know or they don't have access, but. Right. And know. it's more affordable meat, yeah. you know, because grass fed meat is more expensive and, you know, organic stuff is more expensive. So there's, there, there is that, but also, you know, people in Alaska for, don't have a lot of fresh produce, of course. you know, in certain parts of Alaska and they grew up that way. And they're sort of, they're sort of genetics or, you know, and as opposed to somebody who grew up in Hawaii, you know, and I think that there is, again, totally based on, I'm just, it makes sense to me, not anything scientific. I mean, I have sort of, you know, I've seen books and things on it and read articles on it, but I, I, I certainly am not an expert, but I, I kind of do think there are different diets that are best for individuals. And I think it's important to find what feels healthy for you. I agree with that. I, would, I think what's hard for me to comprehend is when people take blanket tactics and then try to apply it everywhere. And when there's a disregard for evolution, meaning if certain populations or certain peoples evolved eating a specific way, like Mongolia, for example, if you don't have access to certain produce and you're eating right. a ton of meat, it would be very difficult to go to those people and say, you all have to be vegan now because their entire ancestry evolved on this diet. And I, that's where I'm like, okay, well, you have to kind of look at genetics, evolution, sources, all of the different kinds of people, how this works. You can't just be like, red meat's bad. Yeah. Don't ever eat it again. Right? Yeah. I, I, I tend to agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Besides Henry Rose, which is obvious, your beauty routine in the mornings, in the nights. Do you have anything that you do that's routine? The audience is obsessed with routines and rituals. No, and I don't, because I'm ADHD, I, I have a hard time with routines. I clean, I moisturize. That's kind of it. Simple. Super simple. And um, honestly, for me, I find that my skin looks the best when I'm eating well and when I'm exercising on a regular basis. I think that the 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 oxygen, the blood flow to your skin, I think the sweating, the elimination of toxins. I think when I see, uh, when my skin is at its best, it's when I'm, you know, doing a lot of steams and doing a lot of saunas, I'm working out, I'm sweating, I'm getting that, you know, I, I for me, it doesn't have a lot to do with products. I love the sauna. I mean, love the sauna. Because we're puffy. I know. Uh, right? Oh. <laughs> have you ever tried um, Have you ever tried a cold bath? <sighs> My son does cold baths. Um, 
not a bath. I've stood under the shower for all of 10 seconds. Okay. That's as far as I've gotten. Well, now you have an ice roller that you can yeah. put in the freezer. I want to do that. that, though. I'm really. You know what? I, I'm telling you. You I, do it. I do it I'm three times you. a week. How I have a do protocol. S- I do two minutes, two minutes, two minutes, and sauna in between. We do we do about forty one degrees, and then you go sauna, cold sauna. But you know what's crazy is all, all all these kids right now are sick because they've all been stuck indoors, and so a lot of yeah. kids are getting sick going back to school. We don't get sick because we're doing this protocol yeah, yeah, between yeah. sauna and cold, and the immune system's just. I like, mean, I don't two two what now? So the protocol, and this is by a scientist. This is not okay. me, Andrew Huberman. Is I do two minutes in the cold, fifteen minutes in the sauna. Two minutes in the cold, 15 minutes in the sauna, two, the cold. two minutes and 30 seconds in the cold, end on the cold. And you want to get the shiver effect to melt the brown fat. End on the cold. See, that's what always confuses me. Now, how do you do the cold? You, you want the body to warm but back where up did, naturally. Do you fill your bathtub with no, ice? No, I'm going to show it to you what right do now you do? while you guys are talking. You have it? it? You have like a tub? We bought this thing called, it's it's Wait, Blue I wanna Cube. Give, I want to give them a good plug because we Blue talk Cube. about them all the time. And I always, yeah, Blue and, Cube baths. And what's cool about them is they make them like the really beautiful products. It's gorgeous. Um, it's like a wood ooh. bath. Yeah. Show it to and her. It, and what's great about that product is it keeps it freezing cold the whole time. You have to refill it. It has a filter and goes in and out. So it's just filtered water. over. Wow. And, you put it, and then um, what's nice about that is like it feels like you're in a, a running river because the water is constantly moving. And what makes that difficult is when you get in a cold and you're sitting in a bath, you've developed this thermal layer that's around your skin. So you actually can stay warm. But with this, the water's moving. So it's like being in a oh, river. Nice. So you're always you're freezing. So yeah. you're freezing the entire time. The it's fun to it, do with your kids, too, and your husband. The way you, I look at it is I feel it, like. it's the hardest thing you're going to do, hopefully, in the morning and in the day. Do you have a pen? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to um, write it down. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hook these guys up with you. They're going to be excited. <sighs> Blue cube bath. Because we've been thinking about getting something like this. Well, this we, is, the, I think this is the best one. We wanted it um, yeah. outside, it, right? It's outside. And we wanted something that looked nice. Yeah. And so so uh, relaxing when you wake up in the morning, you get a little bit of sunlight. You're sitting yeah. in that cold plunge. It moves the water it's, like that. It's like doing a line of crack cocaine. I'm not, I, like you, <laughs> Whoa. it is, it is the best high to 30 and on. And end on and 15 minutes in the sauna each one. And if you want the, to see the, the rule, protocol, it's by Andrew Huberman. Yeah, if you look up Huberman, hey, Andrew, um, he has a whole protocol and he has amazing podcasts on this. We actually did one with him, too, and he gave the whole thing. But what he basically told me, I was talking to him and he said, if you can get 11 minutes per week, that's all in cold exposure to that okay. degree. So you could break it up three minutes one day, okay. three another. And then 57 minutes of sauna a week. You do more, you could do less. Like, that's what's been proven in the scientific journals to actually show health okay. benefits. My agent stays in the cold bath for 10 minutes. That's a really long time. But that's, I mean, that's, that's, you know what that is? That's mental toughness. It's building. Yeah. Your, that's a good agent. Where's, the, that's a great agent. Yeah, he's a good Keep agent. The agent. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but the cold, what it's done for me postpartum is that I feel like it's helped me melt a layer of fat that I would not have been able to melt without it. When also, it really has helped. She, really has helped. And I still have a long way to go, but like, you, it's you really helped. struggled the first time around postpartum. Really like, struggled. Like really, we've talked about it. And this time she's kind of. It balances your hormone. It's weird. It's very weird. Hmm. Anyway, that's that's my one tip to Michelle. That's okay. my beauty tip. If you're already doing the sauna, ice. right? Yeah. yeah. It's great. Um, okay. I don't so, think I could go back without it now. So it's you I'm would gonna, say I'm sauna. Gonna... Sauna is an important tip for you. The detox, I agree with you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. You guys. I mean, obviously sleep, you know, uh, you know, all of that, managing your stress. It's all. But but diet, honestly, diet and exercise, I think are key, key. If to I don't your ask beauty you this, regime. The, uh, the audience is going to go crazy. What's your exercise that you like? Well, depends on how much I've injured myself. Um, I do. I I do different things. I do weights. Important for your bones. Um, and I'll do inter. I do a lot of interval training. I do. Um, you know, I'll do the bike. Mm, I don't know. I'll kind of mix the bike in, and I'll do uh, the assault bike or the. Or the regular bike. The what? The salt. You know the one where you're like going like this on the bike? No, 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 no. no, no. 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 Like a bike. stationary like, bike. Yeah. Stationary, stationary bike. bike. Yeah. My God. And I'll do like, you know, sprinting, walk, you know, sprinting. Um, And I kind of, uh, I kind of, I mix it up. I do a lot of walking. I walk a lot. Hiking. I'm going to take a lot of these tips right now, being six months postpartum. Let's do a giveaway for Henry Rose before you go. All you guys have to do is follow. I'm assuming the Instagram's at Henry Rose. Mm-hmm. 
Um, follow Henry Rose on Instagram and then tell us your favorite part of this episode with Michelle on my latest Instagram. Thank you so much for coming. Where can everyone find you? Where can they shop and support? I am 100% buying every single one of these fragrances I'm putting Which one in. do I need? We Which also one? have, well, well, first of all, you can, all of them are genderless. Okay. So it depends on what you kind of, uh, you know, category you gravitate toward. I like like that, like kind of like more like wood, like cedar. Yeah, yeah. Smell. You'll like char. Char. Okay. Um, I don't know. A lot of men are liking dark as night. Fog is really beautiful. Um, it's a little bit light, and then and then some of them mixed together. Okay. Um, like again, uh, char and windows down is a killer combination. Um, we're always trying new things, but we also have other categories. We have um, our our body cream is you're in the water all the time with that cold water it makes your skin feel like silk Looking and right they you know um we have them with with a number of our um of our most popular uh scents and uh yeah char. look at this char. feeling dirty that's cool char. No, feeling Dirty. Yeah. yeah. Pe uh, people, I life, think, huh? are going to be shocked. They're going to be paying attention to more what's in their fragrance. I mean, and also we're in retail. We went into retail this year, Amazing. which has been huge, huge for us. Where um, can they shop that? Well, we're in uh, not every Nordstrom, but we're in Nordstrom. We're in Neiman Marcus. We're in Bergdorf Goodman in New York. We're in Credo um, across the country. So that's cool. Yeah, it's really. Um, we're very, very excited. Is this weird that I would also use this as a home scent? For instance, like whenever, uh, like, can I spray it on my pillowcase? I was just going to say um, a lot of, in fact, uh, Smith, which is one of our, you know, kind of lighter sort of fresher ones. It's Apple, a friend of mine uh, who he's got like the whole wardrobe, you know, and, and that's the other thing is people are really using scent in such a different way now. They're really, it's like a part of their wardrobe. It's like an, it's like accessorizing, which is really fun. Anyway, when he gets home from work at night, he likes to take a shower and he'll spray Smith on because it's sort of clean and light and then he'll spray his pillows. So yes, you can, you can spray it on your pillows. Can you make Michael Bostick a hairspray? Well, that's, well, the, we need a hairspray. You know spray. what? Hair is a tough nut to crack. Oh. Well, listen, when you're ready and you want to shoot to the moon, you let me know. We'll get that hair going because okay. I'm telling that you, the people. Hair, yeah. You know, you could look at JVN because he has a lot of, his hair products are really nice. I he, don't he's know. He's been on the show. I don't. Oh, okay. Isn't he great? He's, he's, oh, yeah. he's a character. I love. Anyway, I, I really, I've been using his products. I think they're really nice. I, but I don't know that he has a hairspray. I don't actually think that he does. I think <sighs> he does. A hairspray. I know he has a pace. He gave me the I don't pace. know, but you got to get rid of that hairspray that you're using because it's going to light something on fire. You know what? I will. I This is actually a true story. I intuitively kind of stopped using colognes. Like I really don't because she Not got me. Now you have one to use. So now I'm excited again because I have I'm going to put this in our she, guest bedroom. I'm going to put it downstairs. I'm going to put it in our room. This is I for me. Oh, and we is, have candles. Oh, good. Oh, my God. I could go off on a no, whole tangent about our this. candles. Wait, the candles, this is just like a quick note. Candles are really disgusting, huh? What the, What's in candles that people are burning throughout I, the house? Actually, I got to tell you, uh, I don't know uh, what's in other people's candles, but um, our, our, the, the scents in our candles are taken from the formulations in our EWG verified cradle to cradle certified um, fragrances. And the, the thing is, is that a lot of people are so sensitive to fragrance and and the world is not sensitive to those people. And, you know, um, if you if you're transparent with your ingredients and people because then people end up having to be there. I remember a doctor saying to me once I was having some kind of skin reaction and I didn't know what it was and I had never had any issues. And he said, what are you doing different? What are you doing? Different? I, I don't know. He says, you're going to have to be your own detective. That's all. I, he's a dermatologist, one of the top dermatologists. He couldn't tell me. He said, you're going to have to be your own detective. So I, first of all, I thought that was really weird. What do you mean? I have to do this. I just came to you. I'm paying you to tell me what's wrong with me. And people do. And so when you have allergies, it's everywhere. And if, if you can, you can begin to, to see the same ingredient in, in, in different products that you're reacting to. And then, and then maybe you don't have to abstain from all fragrance because you only have to abstain from the things that have that one ingredient that you're pretty darn sure is the thing you're reacting to. A hundred percent. And I think it's so, it just, you just go slow. You don't do it all at once. Like 
I just found out, and maybe this is a tip for anyone who's listening, that aquaphor has something that actually ends up causing eczema. So there's like oh. a, a natural aquaphor. It's this brand yeah, the, called the, the, Maddie's. The cream you put on the babies, the yes. little babies. I mean, it go, we could go on and on. But the point is, is just making little tweaks, I think. The candle thing, I think that's great you guys are doing candles because everyone wants candles in their home, but I don't want all the yeah. stuff that comes with them. So I think that's amazing you're doing candles. I'm shocked you have not been on the co- the uh, Skin Deep database. Oh, well, she'll oh, be there I'll now. Be t- uh, mm. Yeah, really. Yeah, uh, thanks worry. for coming on the show. We're going to now move our family into the middle of the woods. <laughs> I would. I already asked him about getting the telephone poles down, the EMF. <laughs> yeah, next time you see me, I'll have a long beard. I'll be wearing some, you know, I'll have some kind of walking stick. <laughs> we were just <laughs> told to turn off our phone at night because of the EMF. I, I could go on. No, world, you got it. You can't have your phone. You're not can't have your phone by your bed. No, I put it across the room. Michael She's puts very it dramatic. on his penis. You put it on your <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, don't touch my future baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, listen, we're taking a break right now. Right? Oversharing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oversharing. Yeah. A little bit. Henry Rose, you guys, go check it out. Um, can you tell us one more time what you're layering so they can go buy that? Because that's the one that I want. Yeah. It's char okay. and windows down. Char and windows down. Char and windows down. And um, I smelled one on someone else that was really nice, too. It was Flora Carnivora and Last Light. Hmm. Okay. I wrote it down. Michelle, you are so inspirational. You're such an icon. Our audience is going to go crazy. This is such a cool conversation. Thank you for taking the time. I know you're at Michelle Pfeiffer official on Instagram. Mm -hmm. They're easy to find. Everyone go follow her if you're not already. Thank you. Thank Thank you you so much. Thank you so much for having me. This was really fun. Thank you. 